today the market doesn't look like in a marathon mode. It sort of had a sprint, and yep. then it's tiring a bit. In fact, the Nifty is up only 56 points now. So the SGX Nifty was right after all. Uh, it sort of never caught up with the with the Nifty's <coughs> gains, uh, but. Uh, and this, this could get very interesting because now we're just only 55 points higher. Has the low been made at 10,600 or is it foolish to sort of... No, I, I, I don't think you can call that as a low. It's it's not... It's uh, Again, for someone like me who has been bullish in the past, mm -hmm. uh, it's been very, very disappointing to see the Nifty even below 11,000. Mm -hmm. So I think that even if you have spikes, per, I'm saying even if a 100, 200 point uh, rally held in the morning, I think till we don't take out some levels, uh, which essentially for me is around 11,200, I don't think they're out of the woods. We will have oversold, overbought phases. Uh, the head, like for example, you know, if I'm finding contradiction not just in India, globally. The headline news is poor everywhere. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the US inverted yield curve, rece recession, Donald Trump, which side of the bed he wakes up up next morning, what he tweets. And yet, if you look at the markets, they are extremely oversold, even in India. When I look at the markets, when I look at oversold indicators, I think we are at a record oversold levels. So what you'll have is that you'll not have a runaway on the upside, and I don't think you're going to have an immense collapse also. So you will have these range-bound levels. So for me personally, what's important is that in this range, the selection of stocks is what's going to matter. Mm -hmm. And here too, uh, I mean, it may sound like an old record, but quality is going to still stand out. It's still where you find that mm -hmm. when the market corrects, you fall relatively less. Mm -hmm. And as and when the market will reverse, you're more likely to outperform. You said that it could be a range-bound market. What makes you so confident that there won't be a deeper sell-off because of the global queue? So what, what I feel is that, uh, you know, at the moment, it's not just India. It's even if you look at the Dow. You'll find that, like, let's say 25,200 or so, I think, is the lower level. We are just above that. So you'll find that markets have been in a range. It's, it's not that the first time we've had a 600-point fall in the Dow. Mm -hmm. It was, I think, on Independence Day. Fortunately, we were, sh uh, and we were shut yeah. and we were yeah. saved the blushes. Yeah. So what you really have is that this Twitter thing, you know, and, and Donald Trump moves the markets. And what he tweets, honestly, he's not very accountable for. And if you look at the history, yeah. you'll find that not everything has come true or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, this is very, very unpredictable. And, it's, and, and it has its repercussions globally. Yeah. So I know that we are sitting on a 600-point-plus Dow. We don't know what's going to happen overnight. So what I'm trying to say is that the markets are, the headline news is very volatile. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when I look at India or I look at the US, I find that it's extremely oversold. So I feel there will be short covering rallies. But the important point is that are these rallies going to be good enough to reverse the trend for which I have my doubts. That's why I said a level of 11,200 because the market has been making lower tops. Mm -hmm. You know, 12,000, then 11,700, 11,200 till the market does not take the last higher top, which is around 11,200. I don't think a reversal is in place. So you will have it chopping around. On the downside, I think 10.5 uh, is a support level, which was the lows of 2019. So 10,500. 10, 10, oh. so, so, so what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's not out of the woods. Things are volatile. Things are difficult. And in this time, the best place is to find refuge in quality. It's expensive, yes. Uh. That but it will like relatively it. outperform. It will protect you. And as and when the tide turns, I feel that this is what will break out first and will head to new highs. That was going to be my question. Sure. What is the advice to uh, someone who is picking his own stocks and not going the SIP route? Uh, should they actually sit out in cash? Or is it the time to chase what? So, and when you say quality, do you mean staples? Uh, so, 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 you know, this is something I, I meet hundreds of investors. Yeah. And uh, each one I see, they are really going through a lot of pain. You know, you have portfolio managers and funds which are doing very well. They've relatively held out very mm -hmm. well. But I see individual portfolios are down almost 50% mm -hmm. when I meet people because most of them are in the small and mid-cap space. Mm -hmm. How many of them have the HDFC banks and the Kotak mm -hmm. banks and things like that? So the pain that is there at individual portfolio levels is very high. And the question even people have started asking me is that oh, should we continue with our SIPs, etc.? So the point is that, you know, these cycles keep happening in markets. And we keep hearing about buy when there's blood on the street, etc. Mm. Those are true. Mm. But the fact is that when you are in that situation, like how we are, people lose their patience and equanimity. Mm. So the important thing is, yes, times are tough. But that doesn't mean you've got to throw out everything. You will have opportunities. The question is in which space you need to be in. Mm. So I've, 
I have a personal preference in these times to be in quality because that's where your portfolios hold out. You'll be surprised that how many people are even outperforming the index yeah. mm -hmm. in such difficult times. But the common theme in their portfolios will be quality. And I feel that as and when markets reverse, which they do, markets are cyclical, you will find that that is where the leadership will come. So okay. your definition of quality is what? Infosys, TCS, HUL, that kind of... It's numbers. Okay. It's pure numbers. Mm -hmm. It's across sectors. Even mid-caps as a basket. You know, there is a big hope trade that small and mid-caps will bounce. I think that there also, there is quality in mid and small cap. But as long as there are numbers to support, Mm. There is no fighting the numbers. Exactly. Mm. You know what? Just look at RBL Bank, for example. And I remember, you know, uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, before the leave when that uh, CCD issue was sorted, and you know, there was a lot of buy calls on RBL Bank. Three ninety-five was the level, and from there, you know, there's something wrong with some of these stocks, and the market knows that, and that's why you know you're seeing that move. Uh, and just a word on some global situations. Uh, where do th where do you see the the dollar index headed uh, and uh, the rupee? Because that will have you know, implications for the market. Sure, I think the dollar was what was giving a lot of people sleepless nights a few days ago. You know, yeah. when the DXY pushes around 99, yeah. uh, it does create tremors and the whole fear is of a global risk off in commodities and emerging markets. But I think it's sharply corrected on Friday and I think that again, that's a thing that will cool off further. Mm -hmm. uh, so even as far as the rupee goes, you know, we had also kind of run up a wee bit. So I feel that there will be cooling off, there will be correction. Yeah. It's not a trend reversal. But the fact is that the rupee will get weaker, but for the short to medium term, I think that there is a little bit of a pause. The fear that 99 on DXY would go, mm -hmm. which I think would be again headlines and would again you know, grip fear. The markets are extremely fearful at the moment. So there are very few silver linings that are there. So these are stocks that have already rallied 15% in right, August, right. but now nothing much has come through from the statements. Right, right. So would you sell into this rally? Would you buy some more? How do you trade so it? So honestly, Sonia, I don't have any autos in my portfolio. The reason is that the trends, the longer term trends in autos have broken. broken. Like it's you see it with PSU banks, you know, every six months you have this thing and they have a pop-up trade. Yeah. But three months later, they're all making new lows. So the fact is that you don't, I for one, am not betting on these hope trades. I am betting on where there are numbers, where there is quality, and that is where the protection is. Yes, the overall market will have its collateral damage, but you definitely want to fall less. Mm. And more importantly is position your portfolio that as and when markets turn, mm. it is those companies that are performing is where the leadership or where you will have recovery of capital. So I feel like this is not a great time for a hope trade mm. or to bet on you know some PSU banks because something something will happen because we've seen it two three four times you know you had these 10 20 percent pops but three months later you're making new lows. Yeah. So I feel that it is a time to yes times are difficult but all is not lost. There's, this is hardly a time to stop your SIPs. In fact, you need to start your SIPs. If you're an investor, you are getting bargainings, but it's important to be in quality. It's important. Quality is expensive. It's always painful. Mm. People have this problem. Like if you look at something like insurance companies, mm. you'll find that you, you have a very different market there. You look at specialty chemicals. It's a very different market out there. So you have these pockets but the common theme that you'll find there is that they're all delivering good numbers. Okay. Uh, well, what about Reliance? Again, I can't can't speak about stocks, stocks, and I have it in my portfolio. Okay. But uh, you wouldn't be. I mean, it's not disappointing. No, it's not. Actually, one of the best performance uh, yeah, this yeah, month yeah. as well. Uh, what's your take on the rupee, though? You said that it'll gently depreciate. I mean, you said it'll depreciate. You didn't say gently. Yeah. So, so what happens is that I feel that the rupee. Uh, in the last few days, I really run up very sharply. And from those levels, you will see a, a little bit of a thing. But ultimately, the trend is higher, and I think it will head to around 74 or thereabouts. But that is a longer term price move. Okay. okay. So, overall, uh, Atul, uh, given the global context, how do you see the rest of this year shape up? You said that in the near term, we're going to be range bound. But you think uh, by the end of the year, you know, we don't have any major returns right now. Absolutely. By the end of the year, is it going to be a negative return year for India? It's very difficult to say, Sonia. You know, markets are so dynamic, so event driven. And more so, I mean, you sleep with a thought process on Friday night, yeah. thinking that, you know, you're going to have a runaway. And when you wake up on a Saturday morning, Things have changed. So things are very dynamic. So I think you need to take this market. See, when markets break out from a range, right, then you can have some bigger upside or downside targets. But at the moment, I think they're chopping around. Mm. As I said, there's global bear news, bear news. recession, bo yield curve, blah, 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 geopolitical, China, etc. Yeah. But I think the silver lining is that all these markets, all this pessimism is there in the price, that markets are extremely oversold. Okay. So they will lead to bounces. 
However, you have to question like this morning, mm. that how sustainable are these okay, bounces? So, so you mm. know, you said uh, numbers. Uh, any two or three names? Give us uh, some names. I can't give you names, but I, sp I spoke about sectors. Like mm. look at insurance. Mm. Again, an under-owned sector yeah. in India. Hardly Not consumption, owned FMCG types. I mean, see, for instance, Bata's numbers were good. Nestle's was good. Without taking... Trent was good. Yeah, I have a vested interest in all these stocks. So I can't <laughs> okay. even... Uh -huh. The fact is, that's exactly you the know, point uh, I'm trying to make. Insurance, like, you have given us names because there are only three listed. There. So <laughs> no, that, again, again that, that, is, that is no names and there is no... They have a vested interest point. in all these spaces because, uh -huh. see, I'm a trend investor. Where, wherever there are trending earnings and trending prices, I'm there. And you'll find that for whatever it is, this is a place for refuge. Even when markets correct, you'll find that they fall less. Mm. So ideally, you want to be in a portfolio that falls less in falling markets. And when rising markets, it tends to be the first do to break out. Do you have pharma in your list? I do have. You uh, own some pharma. Yes, I do. But no, I'm not talking about names. I, no. They would not. They're not. But uh, they would. my stocks would be generally okay. at the different side of the... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but Anush tried his best to actually peer into your list. Yeah, I, I think I, he got <laughs> some names as well. Maybe he'll <laughs> share them with yeah, us. I don't know. I can't for regulatory reasons I know, I know, discuss I take stocks. Point. But being a trend investor, ultimately, it's I've seen it over cycles. And I've been a veteran of 1990 that for... It is very cute in runaway markets to be into all kachra and etc, mm. etc. Mm. They make you feel good, you see big returns. Mm. But when you the cycle ends, you go away with nothing. It is ultimately quality. In mm. India, wealth is created in the top 50, 100 exactly. stocks. Yeah. They have always been quality mm. and they've always been expensive. Mm. Oh, yes, and they've always been the lowest beta stocks. Absolutely. <laughs> Most money has been made. Thanks. Thank